Tonight is October the 7th, 2017. And what I'm going to do tonight is document, uh, hopefully, a repair of this uh, old meter that I've had for a long time. It's called a uh, multimeter TS505AU. It's a vacuum tube voltmeter made from uh, the late 50s, early 60s. I used it actually not too long ago to align the uh, old Collins R390 receiver I have. I have pulled the screws out of it. I haven't pulled it apart yet. Here's the four screws. I should have shown you all this in case you have one and want to take it apart. But anyway, these four screws right here. There's one right there. Right there. Right there. And back in that dark corner that you probably can't quite see. That's those four screws. And then there's these two long ones right here. These are captured so they don't fall out. Here's a cover for it. Uh, this thing was actually sold very legal, I reckon. Property disposal officer, $25 once upon a time. Uh, here's the RF probe that comes with it and a couple more tips for the uh, DC probe, I believe, right there. Yeah. So you can swap these guys out. I have uh, had this for a number of years. I've replaced the uh, common wire. This one should be green, but I didn't have any green. And this one should be blue, and it is. See, like blue for AC. Anyway, it's got uh, off, on, plus DC, or plus and minus if it was working. See, it does nothing. Well, it does something. I mean, the, the, uh, the power light lights up. Maybe you can see it better like that. Trying to keep the glare down. Um, you can measure ohms, plus DC, plus and minus. That way, it ends up. If it was working, it'd go into the middle, and uh, that's just like reversing the uh, probes and then AC. So it's pretty simple. It goes from uh, two and a half volts R times one to uh, 500 volts R times one meg up here. Really nice little meter. One of the things about them is they have no electrolytic capacitors in them, so they last virtually forever. And this thing has worked miraculously for probably every, probably all of the tubes in it are original. But now it does nothing. I do not know the answer. I hope it's simple. I actually want to repair this thing. I'm going to guess a filament's burned out in a tube. That's my guess, but I don't know. Anyway, I got the screws out. I'll have to put this thing on a tripod. I'll show you how it opens up in case you ever get one of these so you don't have to hurt yourself. Trying to open it up is actually quite easy. What you have to do is they get stuck pretty bad sometimes as you put your screwdriver right there and pry on it. Actually, that come loose. Okay, that's where it comes loose. Right there. Well, I've had it apart in the last few years probably back in uh, 15 when I checked it out. Uh, I'm going to have to put this thing on a tripod and then I'll pull it apart and uh, show you what it looks like inside. Okay, here it is inside. There's a schematic inside, so you don't ever lose that. Isn't that nice? A real genuine schematic for this one. Not, no doubt. Well, hope it don't need too much. Okay, well, here's what it looks like. It's a beautiful piece of equipment. It's still turned on, too. I'm, I'm leaving it on because I'm going to turn all the lights off and see if I can see any of the filaments burnt out. You know, you got to check the simple things first. Probably I ought to check the fuses first. There's some fuses. There's a... Oh, that's a... Looks like it's got spare diodes in it. Look at there. There's a spare diode. There's another spare diode. I wonder what that's for. I actually don't know. First time I've ever seen those. Hmm. Those must be for the for the probe tips or something. How about that? Yeah, you can see where I've uh, spliced in the wires right here. When I changed those um, cables. Well. Uh, I'll check the fuses and then be right back, and then we'll see if the fuse, uh, see if any of the tubes are okay. If all the tubes are okay. Okay, back again. Unplugged it. Check the fuse. The fuse is okay. Let it warm up again. Um, let's see. How would I go about? 
doing this and documenting it at the same time. Okay, let's try this. Let's look down here and see if we can see the... Yeah, I can see it lit. That one's lit. Uh, I can't see if those are lit or not. That one is. Yeah, that one's glowing. Hope I don't regret putting my finger in there. Yeah, they're all pretty warm. Oh, that one's cold. That one's not, that one's pretty cold. These that are lit up are pretty warm. That one's cold. Fifty-six fifty-one. Fifty-six fifty-one. Six X four, twelve eight T seven, six A U sixes. Well, it's kind of it's balanced here. It's got a rectifier there. Six A L five. Twelve A T seven, a six X four, a couple of fifty six fifty ones. I'm not sure what they are. Oh they're VR tubes. Oh well, that's interesting. The VR tubes are out. Well what about the rectifier? Well, that doesn't look right. Look at there. It's white. It's not lit. The rectifier tube's not lit. It looks like it must, it must, it's white. It must be busted. Well, I don't know how in the heck it got busted. This thing just sits on a workbench, has the best life in the world. But doesn't that look busted to you? Well, I'll pull it out and we'll see. Well, this is this has got to be it. Look at there. This thing must have internally shorted right there. Look how that uh, the cathode and the plates look all goofy. I guess the uh, I've had it on for the last few days. I guess the, the thing uh, must have shorted inside and uh, and destroyed itself. Look at there, a JHS. Hope you can see that. Six X four. Made in USA, Sylvania. No doubt that's the original tube. Well, I got lots of these. I got to go get one of those. Maybe that's all there is to it because the VR tubes are not lit. I bet that's it. Well, that's certainly part of it, isn't it? Unless something caused that. Oh, yeah. See, electrolytics, yeah. See, there there aren't any in there. Well, that's probably all there is wrong with it. Well, maybe I got lucky. Be right back. Well, here's one I found pretty quick. A Raytheon... JRP6X4W made in USA, so looks okay. You know, it's pretty amazing how long these things last when you think about it. If this thing was made in 1960, that's 57 years. Let's see, I better unplug it. Probably what I ought to do. Let's plug this guy in. Maybe we'll be able to see this thing uh, get fixed real time. All right. All right, maybe luck will be on my side. Well, there it is. That one's lighting up, isn't it? Big time. I still don't, oh yeah, there's a VR tube just turned on. There's the other one. Well, by golly, I'll tell you what, luck counts. I am very pleased. Well, let me button this thing up and we'll check it out. Looks like, uh, looks like I got lucky. Before I button it up, I'll uh, uh, you'll look at this. Actually, I think I may have put that on there. I think, yeah, I think I did. I think I did that one time during calibration. That AC Cal, AC Zero, Zero Center, Course Zero Adjust, and DC Cal. I don't remember all this stuff in my head, but I think it's pretty easy to set up yeah, or, or to uh, calibrate. To make adjustments on there's a nice little transformer there 500 volt center tap 15 milliamps I love this on stuff you know I had a conversation with a gentleman just recently about uh, you know a, a non techie guy like us generally that watch these videos and um, the, the, the I think it was about stereo equipment and the question was like uh, how do you keep it running I said you keep it running by using it and by and when something goes wrong with it, don't don't do something stupid to it. Don't disassemble it. Don't change all the tubes in it. Um, well, anyway, a lot of stuff ends up in the trash can because uh, basically there's 
something very minor wrong with it. I'm going to have to find out what those diodes are for, though. They're obviously some sort of spare. I don't know where they go. But anyway, there you go. Let's see if this thing uh, will uh, power up now. Well, i got to turn it over and put it in its case where I get electrocuted. Okay, doing a little bit of uh, calibration on it. I do have a very accurate uh, regulated high voltage power supply here. I've got see, I've got one zero zero point zero zero. It's hundred volts, and uh, I'll put it in standby so it'll go to zero. And uh, set this thing right at zero, close as I can. Let it warm up. Maybe I should let it warm up for an hour or two. I don't know. And then I put 100 volts on it. Looks like it's a little bit off there, doesn't it? Let's see if we can uh, DC cal. Let's see if uh, we can tweak that guy. In. There you go. Let's see if that changed to zero sometimes. You never know. No, there's zero. And there's a hundred DC. Let's see what would happen if I went to uh, 50. Yeah, 50 is a little high then, isn't it? Sorry for, it's hard to keep the meter right on it. I guess the tracking of the thing is, uh, I'll have to look into that. There's probably some, uh, some tracking that, that I don't that I'm not taking care of because 50 should be right smack in the middle and that's measuring about 50 a little over 52 but uh, 100 is right on well I'll have to look into it I won't try to do all that here on camera well, anyway Really nice old equipment if you get the stuff, you know. Uh, it's fun to use, it, it works. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can uh, uh, figure out exactly how to make the, how, how to make the, the range more linear there. Well, here are the calibration procedures. They're just dirt simple. I've gone through each one of them. The only one I didn't do is the AC. I have a calibration uh, DC voltage, but I don't have calibration AC voltages. And uh, there are the pots. And the, those two diodes, uh, you can't see them now. Those two diodes are uh, replacements uh, for, for these probes right here. They go on the, they, they, they plug on the end of the DC probe to turn it into an RF probe. Um, the little meter, uh, like if I put it on the 10 volt scale and I put in uh, 10 volts, see, smack on. The thing calibrates on every scale. You only calibrate it once on the two and a half volt scale, but it's it's dead center full scale um, on on every one of the, the 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 range settings down here. But half the the halfway point is a little bit off. Uh, kind of interesting. Let's see, what is that? That'd be five volts. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see, five volts is would be right dead center. So it reads about 5.4. And it actually does that on every scale. So the center readings, uh, everything a little bit less than, uh, than full scale is not quite right. See, that's five volts right there. It should be right dead in the center. But if I put it on the five volt scale, it reads five volts. Actually, it's, ab it's actually a little bit above it now. Oh well, I guess that's the way these things warm up. Let's see. And stand by, let's make sure it's actually going all the way back to zero. Well, hell, now it's not going all the way back to zero. Probably need to let the thing warm up for a really long time. It says about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, there's five. Let's see, let's put it on the 10 volt scale. Should read right in the center. Well, that's better. That's better. That's pretty, that's okay. That's acceptable. Well, there you go. You got to fool with the things. But they're really nice instruments, and there's a really nice write up here uh, on the internet about them, about how they're 
practically indestructible. They make another point about no electrolytics. To the electrolytics, see they have these oil capacitors. These are the power supply capacitors in it. So there you go. If you run across one of these and it hasn't been, uh, you know, to hell and back, uh, you may be able to re replace the uh, leads on it. I think they dry up pretty, you know, and probably need replacing. It says they were built around, I think, about 1952. If I look at this guy, if, if I look at this manual right here, it has a date on it. This one says 1955. It seems like somebody wrote something else on there. Yeah, 1955. Okay. Well, let's assume that's when it was built. So it's, uh, you know, it's 62 years old. So I hope this helps. Hope you enjoy these little uh, videos of this ancient vintage equipment. And I hope it uh, helps restore and uh, save some of this uh, magnificent old equipment. Thanks for watching.